Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is really for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Recently, I've been feeling a little bit more overwhelmed and anxious about everything. And I think that's just because I'm finally back on full blast mode after being sick for an entire month. Like in terms of my work, things were piling up and backlogged because I was away. And in terms of my podcast, I really wanted to take it to the next level. So I really have to show up for it and do all the improvements that I really wanted to do because, you know, after doing this for about three months now, I really feel like there is potential in what I wanted to do and there are just a lot of ideas of how I can grow this podcast and this platform for you guys. So there's been a lot going on on top of my full-time job. And of course, there's also like the usual adulting stuff like I still have to keep the house clean or maintain my healthy workout routine or cooking my meals at home to be healthier and also to socialize with friends. So I just felt like the to-do list on my head, it's just expanding and expanding and it's just like never ending. And I know what I'm feeling is extremely normal. I mean, I get it that not everyone is ambitious as I am, that on top of a full-time job, I'm trying to pretty much have an entire side hustle to become a content creator on top of that. And I also know that not everyone is as serious as me when it comes to maintaining a healthy lifestyle and trying to go to the gym three times a week and stuff like that. But I also know that I am not a mom, I don't have a pet, I don't have parents who are relying on me. I don't have a partner who is stressing me out doing stupid things that I have to worry about. Stuff like that. I know I would never understand what others are going through because we are all different individuals. But I also know that at the end of the day, we are all living here on earth. And unless you are Jesus Christ, We are all birthed through our mother's womb. We all need to breathe, eat, and sleep to get by, and we all will die one day. We are more similar than you think we are, and I'm pretty sure that whatever that I'm going through right now, a lot of you are actually going through it in your own way. And so in today's episode, I want to share with you the things that I've learned to do that has helped me to slow down and calm down as I navigate through this anxious season in my life. First thing first, you have to learn to validate your feelings. I know that you are a strong person, that you are ambitious and you can do whatever you set your mind to it. Instead of ignoring how you are feeling, like how your breath might be shorter or your chest might be tighter, or you're not sleeping as well, and there's just a lot going on right now, you need to first accept that there is a lot going on and you are overwhelmed and anxious and know that what you are going through is real, that your feelings are valid and your body is actually reacting and trying to tell you something. You might think that you don't have time to feel because you are in a rush and you have a very big list of tasks to complete. But the thing is, feeling the need to rush and to do everything now is not going to help you. Because when you are trying to solve everything all at once, usually because you are multitasking and your brain is really not focusing on the right things, More often than not, you just keep on making more mistakes that frustrates you even more. You'll be surprised that when you validate your feelings and when you become more conscious about your thoughts and the emotions that you are experiencing, 
it only takes a 10 to 15 minutes for you to really gather yourself again, to ground yourself back to a calm emotion so that you can tackle all these things that you need to do better. If you find yourself to be at a point where you are starting to feel anxious and overwhelmed, what you want to do is to really first ground yourself back to the present. I've shared this before when I talk about depression on my podcast, and it's that excessive thoughts about the past causes depression, and excessive thoughts about the future causes anxiety. And that is why what you want to do is to really ground yourself back to where you are right now, because then your mind is going to remember that, hey, you are actually just living in the present, your mind was wandering a little bit too far to the past or to the future and it's actually completely okay. You are still where you are right now and you are doing fine. And how you can do to ground yourself back to the present is to really first slow down your physical body, to calm yourself down first. I know that some of you might be listening to this podcast while you are driving or walking, but if you are not driving or walking, I would like to encourage you to just close your eyes for a few seconds as I go through this next part. If you are driving or walking, it's okay. You can totally keep your eyes open while you follow me to just rest and relax and take some deep breaths as we all calm down together. All right, I hope that you can get yourself into a more comfortable position and we are all going to breathe in and breathe out. Let's do it one more time, okay? Breathe in. And out. That feels so good. Let's do it one last time, okay? Breathe in. And out. You can continue to have these deep inhalations and to really start to be conscious of every single part of your body. Like personally, I like to just be mindful of different parts of my body. Like I would first focus on my legs to just relax my legs, my thighs, my calves, my feet. And then I'll get to my arms and my hands to just relax. And then maybe my chest and my torso and then my head. And like just try to relax every single body parts. Like I'm not going to get into details of... Um, a whole like relaxation or breathing exercise because I am not an expert, although I follow some gurus and sessions here and there. Um, but that's what I'm trying to encourage you to do. It's to just physically relax first because when you are able to get yourself back into that parasympathetic state, it will be easier for you to calm down and remind yourself about where you are right now. One more thing that I actually like to do is to actually just remind myself of the date and time right now. So sometimes when I get anxious, I would actually just look into my calendar and my clock and to just remind myself that, okay, it is the August 24th right now and it is 8 a.m. and I'm just sitting at home. I'm here. I am safe. Everything else that is on my mind, I'll be able to go through them one by one. I don't need to worry them now. I am just here in the present. You might be surprised that a simple act of just going through your calendar and your clock might be able to bring yourself back to the reality that you are in fact in the present and you are not in the future as your mind thinks that it is. And so when you are able to really calm yourself down physically 
and ground yourself back to your present mentally, you then have more mental space to actually really observe what it is that is on your mind. So personally, I really like to just list down everything that is on my head. I just open up a page on my Notion that I call a brain dump and I literally dump everything that is on my head into the list. And the list can look something like, number one, rush the designer for the logo. Number two, time for me to change my bed sheets. Three, I need to post a TikTok to be repurposed for my podcast. I need to buy garlic so that I can have steamed chicken for dinner tonight. Oh yeah, my boss asked me to look into this previous event for the data to update him about it. Oh, I also need to confirm my dinner booking with mom. Oh, and I also need to make time to research the right keywords for this week's podcast episode. Guys, I'm not joking. That is what goes on in my mind almost every day. And I feel like my brain pretty much works in future tense. Like I'm usually five steps ahead of what I'm currently doing. And I do think that it can be an asset when it comes to my work. But as you are constantly thinking in future tense, as you are constantly ahead, it's easy for me to get anxious because I'm just not grounded to the present. And that is pretty much why I practice meditation. I started off learning about meditation because I was curious about why people talk about it being a very good routine in your life. But I really continued on the habit because I realized that it was really able to help me to identify what is going on in my head and observe what is on my mind. And eventually, after over a year of just meditating every morning when I wake up, I have been able to observe and calm myself down a lot more easier on a day-to-day basis. But anyways, coming back to the topic, what you want to do is to really observe what is going on in your mind. And it's completely fine to have like a crazy long list on your head. And I want you to approach this without judgment. Okay, because probably half of the time when you're listing this down, you might be wondering like, why am I thinking of all this miscellaneous unimportant things when I have more important things to do. But I really want to encourage you to come without judgment because it's normal to be just worrying about every single thing. And what we need to do is then go to the next step. And that is to really compartmentalize the tasks that are in your head. You need to know that things can be done one step at a time. Yes, right now, you might have a more time-sensitive thing in work because you have a deadline that you need to meet. And because of that, I really think that it is okay to delay certain tasks that is in your head. Like your laundry can be waited until tomorrow or the weekend to be done. And you are allowed to postpone the dinner with your friends if you have to. And it's okay to not work out for a day. It's okay to be gentle on yourself when you have something more important to be completed. But here's the thing. When you finally complete your task, when you finally are done with your submission, yes, you deserve to rest. And I think you should treat yourself to a good meal or have a good long sleep if you can have that. But the key is this, you want to not get sucked into this temporary freedom because you have to know that you are going to wake up tomorrow and complete the other tasks in your list that you have delayed. Oftentimes, whenever we are very, very busy for a while, when we focus a lot on a certain task and then when we finally can relax, we kind of really enjoy this rest part and we just kind of turn lazy because it's just so much more comfortable to not do anything and to procrastinate on all the other things that you are supposed to be doing. But the thing is, when you start procrastinating, you are going to experience anxiety again very soon because before you know it, 
all these little things that you were delaying from before, they are starting to pile up again. So what I'm trying to say is you can do things one step at a time. You can focus on what's the most important and urgent for you right now. And then after you are done, give yourself a little bit of break and then you got to move on to the next task and the next task and the next task. What you want to do is to really take things slowly at your own pace so that you really have the time to still breathe and eat well, sleep well, and have that sustainable energy to walk the longer mile instead of trying to do everything all at once and then experience a burnout again and again. And that is the art of slow hustle. I can talk on and on about this because I am definitely a preacher of slow hustle, of the slow life. But for now, for this podcast, my goal is to really help you to slow down. So let's get back to the topic. I want to remind you that this is just temporary. Whatever you are going through right now, it might be tough, It might be painful, but this is just a fragment of your life. You know, just like the time when you failed for the first time in school, or maybe the time that you had a very bad injury and you had to shower in pain for a few days and it felt like the end of the world. Or I don't know if you guys remember the first time that we were all stuck at home in a lockdown during the pandemic. And when we start questioning everything that we've been doing for the whole life, can you believe that that is all over already? And we are at a point in our lives where we can really look back and say, damn, I can't believe that that actually happened to me. Like, wow, that's all in the past right now. So just remember that this too, whatever you are going through right now, is also just temporary. So why take it so seriously and approach it with so much pain and negative emotions when you can really just breathe in, breathe out, and approach it one step at a time because this too shall pass. I often find that in whatever you do, the hardest part is somehow when you are so close to completing it. Like, I've done a half marathon before, and I remember that the hardest part was really at the final stretch when you can already see the arc there, and you feel like you are almost there. But I don't know why somehow that final mile, that final stretch, it just felt like so hard and so slow to get to the end. Like in my head, I was thinking, wow, my legs are still moving, right? I'm trying so hard to move forward, but I just feel like I cannot reach the finishing line as soon as possible. But here's the thing, like, If you have been running for so long, if you have already ran that 21 kilometers, there's only 200 meters left. Are you going to give up then? No. Even if you have to ask for help from other runners or other volunteers to carry you, you are going to take whatever it takes to get to that finishing line. So what I'm trying to say is, if things are looking so hard for you right now, and if you are feeling like you want to give up right now, that is probably because you are very close to the finishing line already. And while it might seem and feel so hard right now, it's really just one more step. You just need to push through this. You can do this. Have a little faith. Whether you believe in God or a higher being or the universe, just believe that He has it all under control for you. That you don't need to try to do every single thing and try to fix all of the problems that comes your way. Because sometimes, maybe you are supposed to let go and to let life happen for you. 
trust me, you might be surprised by how sometimes when you let go, other people might be able to take lead and take control when you let them too. And surprisingly, they might do it well. And I've shared this before and I'll repeat it again and again as well, is that when I start to learn to ask for help, I find that my life really becomes a lot more easier. And I really think that that's why at the end of the day, humankind still thrive when we are in a community because we are not meant to be living alone. We are meant to have each other by our side to really support and help one another. And that brings me back to why I'm creating this podcast. I really wanted to share with you about the things that I went through and how I've learned to cope with them in hopes that this idea that I have in my mind, that this voice and these thoughts that I have would be able to help you to ease that tightness in your chest to help you to relax your mind and body so that you can focus on the right thing and are able to really take that one step forward from where you are right now. And that's all that I have for today's episode. But before you go, for today's episode, I've put together a special mixtape for you called Slow Me Down. Music plays a huge role in my life. I like to create mixtapes or playlists that matches a certain mood that I was going through at that phase in my life. And usually, this mixtape would come with the songs that really reflects how I feel at that time. Because I feel like when the right music hits the spot, it's almost as if like you can feel what you need to feel without you having to express yourself. And so this mixtape that I prepared, it's a short playlist on Spotify. It is about 43 minutes long with only 11 tracks on it. But these 11 tracks are some of my favorite songs. Some of them were even songs that I used to listen from way back when Spotify still didn't exist and these songs were just in my iPod. If you are listening on Spotify right now, I would highly encourage you to go to my show note and tap on the link right now so that you can add that to your queue to have a more seamless flow from this podcast to that playlist. And if you are listening on YouTube or any other platforms, you should still be able to go to the description or the show notes to tap on that link to go to the playlist as well. You know, preparing this podcast has surprisingly helped me to slow down a lot And reminded myself on how by taking things one step at a time, I can actually conquer all these things that I need to do. And so I really wanted to take this chance to thank you for being a part of this journey with me as well. Because if it's not for you being so supportive of my work on this platform and, you know, this community, I wouldn't have been able to slow down myself. All right, I hope you've added the playlist to your queue. Or if you are waiting to tap on the play button, I hope that you are ready right now because I'm going to end this podcast in one, two, three.